Well, good morning, folks, and welcome along to our morning broadcast here at the Welcome Evangelical Church. Uh, today is a, a special day uh, in Northern Ireland. It's the 12th of July, um, and, you know, even coming down here this morning, um, it's, it's a lovely morning, and all the, the flags are out, the Union flags are out, the bunting, the colour all around us. And the orange lilies uh, are, are, are growing and uh, it's just a day of celebration here uh, in Northern Ireland. It's also, uh, 12th of July is also referred to as Orange Man's Day. And uh, yeah, it's slightly different this year uh, to the other years um, that we would celebrate the 12th of July here um, in our province. But um, the message that we want to talk about today is... Um, what is a Protestant? Um, a portrait of a Protestant. And uh, I just seek today just to open up God's word uh, and to let God's word uh, speak into our hearts. Uh, and then we'll have a look at the subject. What is a Protestant? Where, um, where does, what does it mean? Where does the origins originate from? Um, what about its main fundamental beliefs? We'll have a look at all of that. Uh, during the course of our time together. So again, thanks for joining us. And um, I do pray that God will bless his word to all of our hearts and that the Holy Spirit will open up every one of our hearts today uh, to what the, the, the Spirit would speak into our hearts and what he would want to say. So taking our reading today, we're going to read from the book of Ephesians chapter 2. If you've got your Bible open, then please Turn there with me to the book of Ephesians uh, in the New Testament, chapter 2, just for a basis of uh, what we want to talk about. Ephesians chapter 2, and it's verse 8 down to verse 10. It's just a short reading. Um, and again, if you've got a Bible app, if you're using some kind of an electronic device, then just switch it on uh, and let God's word speak to our hearts. I'm just looking at the screen here and it's great to see some of the folks that are already watching on. God bless you and uh, we would rather be meeting together in church instead of doing this online um, but in a few weeks time God willing hopefully we'll all get back again to church. So we're in Ephesians chapter 2 <coughs> and we'll read from verse 8 down to verse 10. And the Bible says to us this morning, For by grace you have been saved. Now I like the authorised version where it says, For by grace are you saved. Through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. It's not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And I do pray that God will bless his word to all of our hearts this morning. And so the question today, you know, when we think about a portrait of a Protestant, and I, I just believe that it's a fitting message today, since it is the 12th of July. And, you know, it'll do us no harm to look. What is a Protestant? And, you know, as somebody who has been uh, born and reared in this community where we pastor, and for, for those who really don't know uh, the geography of the area, I mean, the, the Welcome Church is situated in between the Crumlin and the Shankill Road area, uh, of the, it's known as the Woodville District. And uh, this is where I have grown up, um, spent my, my childhood here, uh, before we just moved slightly up uh, Ballyga Martin Road um, area, uh, which is again close by. Um, but somebody who has been born and reared in this area, um, really <laughs> we feel qualified to describe for you today uh, what a typical Protestant, um, certainly who would live in this community uh, and throughout our province, you know, what, what that would look like. And, you know, Protestants here would, would associate 
uh, Protestantism with loyalty to Queen, uh, to the Queen and to their country. Um, obviously with the 1690 uh, Battle of the Boyne, uh, and this is the, the celebration today, the anniversary today, uh, the 12th of July. Um, and I can think of childhood days when I grew up in 24 Rafflin Street, um, just up the street here from the church. I can think of um, the 11th night bonfires, uh, just like an ordinary kid who was out there collecting bonfire wood. And, uh, you know, that was just all part of upbringing, the 11th night, the 12th of July, everything that basically associated uh, with that. And, you know, uh, somebody who, um, who has grown up here all of our, uh, all of our lives, uh, I can think of, uh, as a young person running around these streets with, with all of my mates. In fact, I'm just looking, some of my friends are actually watching on today uh, who we grew up with when we were kids. Uh, just running around these streets and you know nearly every young fella who who would have been in, in my era back in the in our teenage days growing up in the 70s growing up in the 80s um, they would have had an affiliation with Glasgow Rangers and well nearly all of us uh, with Linfield Football Club um, and, and that was basically that that's an honest portrait of what life would have been like um, as, as a kid growing up and it certainly uh, it was a childhood in the midst of all of the troubles um, that had happy memories for us. We had a really great upbringing uh, and, and great memories as kids growing up in the community. But what I have just described today, folks, um, a Protestant is much more than what I've described from the 11th night and the 12th and football affiliations and loyalty to Queen and country and all of that. A Protestant is much more than that and uh, I, I just want to really touch on that a little bit today um, and so just as we begin we ask the question let's let's have the starting point what does the word Protestant actually mean everyone who's watching on and, and listening in today I wonder do you know what the word Protestant actually means and, and where do we find its origins well, the word Protestant actually derives from a Latin word called protestare. Uh, and it simply means to publicly declare. That's what the word Protestant means, to publicly declare. And this is really in reference to um, a letter of protestation uh, that was written by supporters of Martin Luther. And it was against the Diet of Spire back in 1529 um, to ban Luther's documents who, and had commanded submission to the authority of Rome. Back then, um, history tells us that the Emperor Charles V, he had attempted to curb Luther's movements by force and was met with protests uh, by the German monks supporters and according to uh, the Reader's Digest dictionary and if you have a dictionary at home uh, a Protestant is described as a member of any of the Christian churches um, descending from those that, that succeeded from the Church of Rome at the time of the Reformation denying the universal authority of the Pope and emphasizing the principle of justification by faith. That's how the, the Reader's Digest Dictionary describes the word Protestant. Many Protestants can tell us about the events concerning 1690. Well, it is the 12th of July after all, and many can point to that particular historic date. Um, but I wonder how many can actually describe the important events before that. If we were to mention the year 1517, would that have any significance in your mindset? And the fact is today, folks, that the Protestant Ref Revolution owes its birth and its initial development to the faith of one man, and that was Martin Luther. 
And although there was widespread discontent uh, within the medieval church back then, it was ultimately Luther's challenge of papal power that brought about a reformation of the Christian religion in Europe. Others before him had made their protests um, and they had died martyrs' death. Deaths, people like uh, John Wycliffe, who was described as the morning star of, of, of the, the Reformation, and people like John Huss of Bohemia. They had, um, they had died horrific martyrs' deaths um, in their stance at that time. And, and, but it was Luther's attack against the sales of indulgences, or what was known as the holy trade. That's what caught the imagination of the ordinary people and found an active response. So who was Martin Luther? He was an Augustan monk who became professor of biblical studies in the University of Wittenberg in Germany. <clears throat> he was a learned man who had no inner peace and he came under the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. And he became a Christian while he was reading Romans chapter 1 verse 17, where he read that man was made right with God by faith and not by works. You see, up to this point in his life, um, Luther it was like a set of rules, a set of regulations. It was what he would do um, that would gain him eternal life. And Romans chapter 1 verse 17 changed all of that thinking where he realised that it was not about doing, but it was about depending on the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. It wasn't about works, it was about faith. And he began to realise that the New Testament idea of righteousness was not one of punishment, but that it was God's nature to demonstrate mercy and forgiveness. When I realised this, and this is the words of Martin Luther, when I realised this, I felt myself born again by God's Spirit. There and then the whole of Scripture took on another look to me. And so the Reformation began on the eve of All Saints Day on the 31st of October 1517 when Luther announced an attack uh, upon indulgences and he stated his arguments in 95 theses or 95 um, paragraphs so to speak and, and they were quite um, heavily academic but they were moderate in tone and news of those 95 theses it spread like wildfire throughout Europe and within a fortnight every university and every religious centre was ripe with excitement. All had marvelled that one obscure German monk from an unknown university had managed to stir the whole of Europe. And here we have the beginnings and the origins of Protestantism and what the word actually means. And so that leads us to the next question today. We've, understand, we've got an understanding what the word Protestant means to publicly declare. We have looked at the origins of it back at 1517 when the Reformation began. But here's the next question, folks. What are the fundamental beliefs and principles of Protestantism? In other words, what should a Protestant believe? Everyone that's out there now, and maybe you've had a celebration over the 11th night, maybe you've been around bonfires, maybe you've got up today, and what, you know, the 12th of July is maybe different this year to what you would normally do every year. Maybe you would go and watch the parade and, and so on and so forth. But I wonder, do you know what are the fundamental beliefs and principles of Protestantism? What should a Protestant believe? 
Well, there's actually three absolutes, three that you can't get away from. And here's the first one. Every Protestant should believe in the supremacy of the Bible. You know something, folks? God's word that we have read from today in Ephesians chapter 2, it reigns supreme. The Bible that I read is infallible. It's inerrant. It reigns supreme. And we're actually told in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And that simply means, inspiration of God means God has breathed. It's God breathed. God breathed upon the writers of our Bible and inspired them to write his word that we read freely today. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And notice this, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Folks, God has set his word higher than the heavens. The supremacy of the Bible, it reigns supreme. There is no book like the Bible. It's still the number one bestseller in the world. And I'll tell you something, I love the Bible. I love God's word. I have been reading it every day for over 30 years. And I thank God for his word. And every day we read it and every time we pick it up, God has something to say to us from the Bible because it is God breathed. And I just wonder, Protestant listening to me today, when was the last time that you actually picked up your Bible and you read it? There's a question. Is your Bible stuck in a way in a corner somewhere that's just gathering dust? Or is it something that's very much a part of your life? When was the last time that you read God's word? You know, today we're living in a society, and I have heard this uh, in recent years. I've heard this term, how that there are Protestant atheists. Maybe you have heard that term as well. Maybe you have met somebody, and they would say to you, Oh, I'm a Protestant. You know, I'm loyal to the core, um, but I don't believe in God. I'm an atheist. I want to say to you today, folks, that you can't be a Protestant and yet deny one of the most fundamental principles, which is the supremacy of the Bible. So I'm saying to you folks today, if there's somebody listening on and you're saying to me, well, I'm a Protestant, but I'm, a, I'm actually an atheist, I don't believe in God. Well, I'm saying to you today that you're not a Protestant. You can't be a Protestant and be an atheist at the same time. It's a complete contradiction in terms. <laughs> you know, if you don't believe in God, then you'll hardly believe in the book that he inspired to be written. That would be fair, wouldn't it? So it is a complete contradiction in terms. You may be a loyalist. You may, ha you know, you, you may have that kind of a mindset, but you're not a Protestant if you declare yourself an atheist. It's a complete contradiction in terms. Secondly, and I just wanted to labour that point because it's really important that people recognise that that is the first fundamental belief in Protestantism, the supremacy of the Bible. And here's the second absolute belief in Protestantism. It's the belief of salvation by grace alone through faith alone. It's actually described as sola scriptura, by faith alone, sola gratia, by grace alone. Free grace or justification by faith alone rather than by good works is what is enough for the salvation of the soul. And this is what the Bible teaches, folks, and what we began with today when we read from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to verse 10. Free grace means unmerited favour. Unmerited favour 
simply means receiving something that, that you never deserve. It's something that you can't merit. It's something that you can't work towards. It's something that you can't achieve. In other words, you just accept it. It's God's free gift of salvation. Jesus has already paid the price on the cross at Calvary. And all we have to do is accept this free gift of God and invite the Lord Jesus Christ into our hearts. And I want you to remember something today, folks, that this is a free gift that was paid with such a costly price. You know, believing something is one thing. Belief can be intellectual and cold. But actually to put your trust in someone is warm and it's personal. And I just want to say here today to everyone that's watching on that God's salvation is not found in any institution. God's salvation is not found in any church organization. Nor is it found in any minister or pastor like myself. It's not found in any culture or in any set of rules. God's salvation is found in a person. And it's found in the person of God's sinless son, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where we can find salvation today. The one who paid such a horrific price, who died a horrific death on the cross for each one of us and rose again on the third day and he made a way for every one of us whereby we can trust him for salvation and experience the joy of sins forgiven. This is the wonder of salvation today and you know this is the only way folks there's no other way that we can spend an eternity with him in heaven other by going through the means of the cross and trusting him for salvation. With respect, again, I'm saying on the authority of God's word that being a member of any of the loyal orders or, or, or our name being on a church roll book or whether we're baptized as a child or whether we're a respectful person and doing good, all of that is not enough. We have to put our faith and our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I would say to you, please do not be blinded by any kind of a mindset that says to you, well, I'm a good person. I'm too good to be lost. Jesus paid a price for sinners. And we have to acknowledge that we are sinners before him and put our faith and trust in him. I want you to listen to what Jesus said in the Bible. He said this in John chapter 3, verse 3. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, unless one is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That's pretty clear. Unless we're born again. Jesus didn't say unless we live a good life, unless we do good, and we should do all of those things. He said, unless we're born again, we can't enter the kingdom of heaven. That's the second fundamental belief of Protestantism. Salvation by grace alone, through faith alone. And here's the third one today, the third major fundamental. It's called the belief in the universal priesthood of all believers. And what that basically is saying, it implies the right for us to freely read our Bibles. Not only that, and thank God that we have a Bible that we can freely read, but also we can take part in any government and all public affairs in the church. And, you know, this is a belief that's opposed to the hierarchical system that puts the authority of a church and any particular individual, whether it's a priesthood or even in the hands of any minister. Listen, folks, we don't need to confess our sins to any particular man or any person, man, woman, whoever. We can bypass everyone and go straight to God. Only God can forgive us of our sins. Only God can cleanse us. In fact, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 
tells us very clearly there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Christ alone is our only hope and he's the only one who can cleanse us from sin. You know, we can bypass the whole religious chain and we can go right to the Lord Jesus himself. Back in Luther's day at the time of the Reformation, the Pope claimed authority to shut the gates of hell and to open the door to paradise. And it was Luther who challenged that authority. And so in this third fundamental belief of Protestantism, the Lord Jesus is the only one who can bring people out of darkness, no matter what religion that they were born into, whether it's Protestant, Catholic, Hindu, Muslim, um, uh, 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 Jewish backgrounds, no matter what background you're born into, he's the only one that can bring people out of darkness and bring them into his marvellous light. And when he does, we have that privilege of being made kings and priests unto God. You know, stop for a moment and thank God for an open Bible that we can read and we can enjoy. And I want to just close today, um, and I appreciate that there's a lot packed into this message. But I want to close by saying this. We do have a Bible that reigns supreme. We do have our Father, we have God that we can trust, that we can rely on. We have a gospel of free grace that we can accept with freedom, that we're privileged to enjoy. And there's a saviour who we can love and who we can serve. Not just in this life, but also in the life that is to come. Folks, these are the fundamental truths. These are the fundamental pro uh, principles of Protestantism. That is found in God's word. And has God's stamp of approval upon it. You know... As I have reflected upon this message today, I thank God for the privilege of being born into a community. And I think of my parents who, uh, my, my dad came from Canmore Street, my mother came from Wilton Square South, right in the heart of the Shankill area. I think of my mum's father who um, was a member of the Royal Irish Rifles, who fought at the Battle of the, of the Somme in the Great War of 1914-1918. And I think of him and many other people who left this community to go out and to fight in a war, really so that we could have freedom today. And I think of him and I think of others. And I think of a community that we have grew up in where the gospel light continues to shine where the evangelical light continues to be preached, where there's churches virtually in every corner, and we can express that in freedom. You know, there are parts of our world today where we couldn't open our Bibles. In fact, if we were to go into some of the Muslim-dominated countries of our world, would be, we would be arrested on the spot. You're not allowed to carry a copy of God's Word. And so I'm very privileged today and I'm very thankful today that we have grew up in an area where even in the midst of the troubles in the 70s and the 80s and all that was going on in the city of Belfast, none more so in and around the community where I lived. But I thank God that there was a freedom where we can learn the truths of God's word. The churches continue to open up where we were sent to Sunday school, like I'm sure you were, and we learned the truths of the word of God. You know I also thank God for the faithful people who have given their lives defending the Bible. I think of men like William Tyndale today who was burnt at the stake but we would have a Bible that we could read freely in English. I think of people like that martyred in dark days when the gospel was hidden and when heresy reigned. You know I thank God for all of that. But what I want to say as I close today, being born a Protestant will never save our souls from a lost eternity. You know something today, a Protestant 
can die in the darkness of their sins like anybody else. When I look at my own life, I was born a prod on the 31st of December 1969. But there came a time in my life when I was born of God on the 12th of October 1986. And you know something, that was the, the best decision that I've ever made in my life. Putting my faith and trust in Christ. And you know, today I just want to say this. And, and I want to ask the question to people that are listening on. Does the 12th of July mean more to you than Good Friday or Easter Sunday? I want you to think about that. You know, we thank God for the celebration and the historic um, influence of what happened on the 12th of July. But when we go further back and when we think of a saviour who died on a cross and who rose again on the third day and he has made a way whereby every one of us can come to know him in a personal way and not only be saved for time but also for all eternity. Folks, this is so important. And I'm saying to you today, especially the Protestants that have listened on today, you know, get back to the Bible. If, if your Bible is hiding in a corner, pick up the Word of God. Get yourself to church. Come along and learn the truths of God's Word when we open up again. And, and let God's Word speak very much into our hearts. And I just want to finish off, you know, if you want to really live as a true Protestant today, then you've got to embrace these fundamentals. The supremacy of the Bible, salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, sola, sola scriptura, sola gratia, and the priesthood of all believers. And I pray that we will not only look at these things, but we will embrace them, that we will apply them, to all of our hearts, that God will bring us into his marvellous light. And you know something, and I've only after just mentioning this, God can bring anyone into light because God loves this world and he loves everyone in this world. He loves Protestants, he loves Roman Catholics, he loves Muslims, he loves Hindus, he loves Jews, he loves everyone in this world. And he wants everyone, without exception, to come to know him. He's not willing that any would perish, but would come to know him in a personal way as Lord and Saviour. I am so glad that I was born of God over 30 years ago. I don't regret it. And I love the Lord Jesus with all my heart. And I want you to as well. I would love you to have that experience that we have had today. This is the, the, the portrait of a Protestant um, and I do pray that God will speak to you. Think about what we have said. Um, I would encourage you to Google those principles. They're there on Wikipedia. You can read them for yourself. And I do pray that you'll pick up God's word and let God's word speak to your heart today. Just drawing to a close, um, this is our portrait of a Protestant. And I do pray that you'll have a great day, whatever you're doing. And uh, have a good, uh, I know tomorrow, public holiday. Enjoy it with your families. Um, again, we're looking at getting back to church in a few weeks. And uh, we just trust God for that. And uh, we'll keep you posted uh, with that uh, over the next few weeks. Um, but I just want to pray with you. Last week, <laughs> I mentioned a number of prayer requests, but I forgot to pray at the end. This is the whole thing about a live recording. And if you've a memory like mine, then you're prone to forget. I know it's an age thing. Um, but I just want to pray for everyone that has listened on with me. I want to pray for your families. I want to pray uh, again for those that are going through bereavement. I want to pray for those that are sick, that are needy. I want to pray again for the care workers, for the hospital workers. Everyone that's out there in the front line. We just want to bring you all before God. And so you that are heading off on a holiday, have a great time, have a refreshing trip. But let me just now pray with you. Heavenly Father, today we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word reigns supreme. 
and we thank you for salvation by, by grace alone through faith alone. We thank you for the principle even of the priesthood of all believers that we can we can pick up our Bible, we can read, we don't need we don't need it to be interpreted by anyone, we can read it for ourselves, and God's word can speak to us. Lord, we thank you for this freedom that we enjoy here. And I pray in the name of Jesus that your word has spoken in the hearts today. Lord, I pray for people that have listened who don't know you. I pray especially for Protestants who have listened on and who are watching, who are even bowed in prayer with me now. And if they haven't as yet put their faith and trust in you as Lord and Saviour, I pray, Lord, that you will speak to them and that they will commit their lives to you right now. Folks that are maybe backslidden and heart away from you, people that have been well taught over the years, like I have in Sunday school days and church days, where we learn the truths of God's word. Lord, we know it's, it's not just enough about learning. It's about applying and putting our faith and trust in you. And I pray that this will happen even right now. Lord, I do think of the sick and the needy. I do think of those that are hospitalised. I do pray for the care workers and the hospital workers. I, I, I thank you, Lord, that you've brought us thus far through this pandemic uh, and I do pray for families that are maybe heading off on holidays. Um, and even as we even as we celebrate today the whole sig uh, historic significance of the 12th of July uh, and what that represents. Oh God, help our minds to go back to Calvary and to go back to Easter Sunday and what that means. Oh God, I pray, Lord, that you'll speak into every one of our lives, that you'll bless every family, every home, that is watching on and listening in today. And we will be careful to give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, God bless you, folks. Uh, and uh, as I say, have a great time. Have a great day. And uh, God willing, we'll be back again next Sunday with another broadcast. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye.